Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision and today's video is going to be all about a topic that hits quite you know, close to home for many of us. This is about manipulation tactics. I've done a lot of videos on manipulation, coercion, narcissists and healing from it and because manipulation be, can be quite subtle and insidious, uh, making it crucial to recognize the signs and protect yourself. So whether it's in relationships, at work or even within family dynamics, understanding manipulation can empower you to take control of your life. So in this video, I'm gonna explore common manipulation tactics, their psychological underpinnings and the practical strategies you can uh, employ to defend against them. So let's get started. Manipulation, what is it? Manipulation involves using deceptive or underhanded tactics to control or influence someone else's behavior or their emotions. Unlike healthy persuasion, manipulation often involves hidden agendas and can leave you feeling confused, guilty, or doubting yourself uh, and your perception of reality, more importantly. Uh, it can lower self-esteem and self-worth. The manipulator's goal uh, is to actually gain power to uh, control or advantage over you. So some common manipulation tactics are Gaslighting, I did a video of this a couple of weeks ago. It's one of the most, it is really is one of the most insidious forms of manipulation. I said that with quite a lot of venom, didn't I? It's, it's a real personal pet hate of mine. It really does, it involves make it, it's because it does so much damn damage. It really does mess people up for a long time because you, it gets you to doubt your own reality, your own perception of reality and your own self. It involves making someone doubt their own perceptions, like I said. Uh, your memories or your sanity. The manipulator denies facts, minimizes the victim's feelings, or twists the truth so much to make the victim uh, question their reality. Like I said, I did, I did a video on this, but you maybe remember having a conversation, but the manipulator insists it never happened, making you question your memory. I've even known people to deny things that have been said on WhatsApp, to deny even have other people involved and uh, you know they they've formed this elaborate lie and it's like no they're still gaslighting away they're still telling you you're perceiving it and you're like well but this person confirms it this confirms it the message no you're completely crazy and if it's got to that level and you're believing it i mean you're in serious serious trouble in terms of being a victim on the end it's going to take you a lot to break away which is it's just a horrible horrible tactic uh, love bombing mm, starts off as quite a pleasurable one, obviously, or sex bombing. It's an excessive display of affection and attention uh, early in relationships to create dependency. And once the victim is hooked, the manipulator can control them more easily by withdrawing the affection. They withdraw the love bombing um, and the sex bombing, uh, or they create emotional chaos. And the reason they do this is it gets you running on the hamster wheel harder and faster because you want to get back to where you were, to where they really admired you and loved you and gave you all this affection and love bombed you and all the rest of it. And they were wonderful. And now all of a sudden they're not. And it's your fault. You'll be told it's your fault. You'll be devalued. I did a video on this uh, in a narcissistic one. I'll put it up here as well. So, you know, maybe a new partner showers you with gifts and declarations of love only to become then distant and critical once you're emotionally attached and invested. Another one that is used as a manipulation tactic is, and some of these are not really conscious, they're unconscious um, tactics, it is triangulation, which involves bringing the third person into the relationship to create jealousy, competition, or to shift blame away from the manipulator. It keeps the victim off balance and keeps them competing for the manipulator's approval. So for example, you know, a friend constantly compares you to someone else to make you feel inadequate or provoke jealousy. They're manipulating you to try harder. They're getting you to feel inadequate in order for you to try to get more of their, try to get validation from them. Therefore, they've got you dancing to their tune on the end of strings. Silent treatment, which I did a video on as well. It's stonewalling is otherwise known as. Uh, this tactic involves deliberately ignoring or refusing to communicate with the victim to punish control or elicit a reaction. Because if you react to the silent treatment, then they can go, ooh, look at your anger. Look at how you get. Or if you go the other way and you get really, really upset, then you'll probably be told that you're weak and you need to grow up or something like that. Or but just that you're weak. Um, it creates feelings of rejection and helplessness. 
Uh, and it's 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 another it's quite a powerful one actually. The silent treatment is really, stonewalling is really quite powerful. I mean, for example, maybe you have a disagreement with your partner um, who's the manipulator, and they stop talking to you for days, leaving you feeling isolated and anxious. And I, by stop talking to you, I mean not even grunting, nothing. You don't exist. They don't look at you. That's full blown stonewalling. You know, they walk past you like you're a ghost, which really, I mean, it sends people into spinning into anxiety, rejection, abandonment frustration, anger, hurt. I mean, it brings out all sorts of stuff in people. And again, you can regain power about it, but I'll get on to power over it. You can regain control, but I'll get back to it. But again, this is a manipulation tactic to get you running on the treadmill, trying harder, not to upset them, get you dancing to their tune so they can feel powerful. Uh, I was, something else I was gonna say there is gone. Okay, uh, another one would be projection. The manipulator attributes their own ne negative behaviors or feelings towards the victim, making them feel guilty or defensive, and it shifts focus away from the manipulator's actions. So a classic example is a partner keeps accusing you of being unfaithful when in fact they are the ones who are cheating. Another one would be guilt tripping, which makes the victim feel guilty for setting boundaries or asserting themselves, so you begin to like, you know, protect yourself against your manipulator, you set some boundaries, you, you kind of go, hey, you know, this behavior is not okay. And then they guilt trip you in um, by playing the victim on the other side of that. So let's say you're being gaslit and you kind of go, hey, you know what? This is gaslighting. And they go, oh my God, uh, I can't believe you've accused me of such a thing and this and that and the other. And oh, you've made me really upset. And uh, maybe it's you who's gaslighting. You can get all sorts of reactions to stuff like that. Maybe you set a boundary and they don't understand the boundary. They don't want to understand the boundary because that means they have to look at themselves. And again, they'll kick against it, make, out, make you out to be the manipulator, make you out to be the one who's persecuting them in order for you to remove your boundary. So they will exaggerate their uh, um, own suffering. And like I said, it's a way to control uh, through basically emotional blackmail. As an example, you know, someone makes you feel guilty for not lending them money, even though you can't afford it would be one. I'm trying to think of some other stuff off the top of my head. Mainly it's to do with setting boundaries. So it's boundaries on someone else's behavior, what you're what you're willing to put up with, what you're not willing to put up with, and then you're the unreasonable one. You're the one causing pain. You're the one persecuting. It could be all sorts you're accused of. So, so look out for it, because it's guilt tripping. So the psychological underpinnings of manipulation. Uh, manipulation often stems from the manipulator's own insecurities, fears, or desire to control. From a psychodynamic perspective, these behaviors can be understood as defense mechanisms, and manipulators project their own unresolved conflicts onto others to avoid facing their own inner turmoil. And if we can understand this, it can help us, if you're, if you're on the receiving end of the manipulation, it can help you recognize that the behavior is all about the manipulator's issues, not their own shortcomings, if that makes sense. Practical strategies to defend against manipulation can be, first of all, trust your instincts. If it feels off, trust your gut. Manipulation often involves real subtle clues. Uh, cues, sorry. So that can trigger an intuitive response in normally in the gut or whatever. You just don't feel right. It doesn't feel right. They're saying one thing, you know, they're gaslight. You think this is a bit like gaslighting, you know, or maybe it's, I don't know, where one of the other ones. Oh, I'm just kind of being made to feel guilty here. Somehow they're sort of turning the tables and I was the one who was upset. Their behavior was really off. And now all of a sudden I've kind of gone, oh, I don't like this behavior. I'm not going to accept it. Now all of a sudden I'm in the wrong. So your intuition, pay attention to it. Pay attention to your feelings uh, of discomfort or confusion. Set yourself clear boundaries. Clearly define and communicate your boundaries, first of all, with yourself, define what they are, and then be firm and consistent in enforcing them within the relationship. Because if you move it, if you move it, they because you're being hounded, they, they, they then learn, well, I can keep manipulating you because all I've got to do is keep on at you like a hammer and eventually you'll move your boundary. So be firm and consistent in enforcing them because these boundaries protect your well-being, and it's also a signal to manipulators that you are not easily controlled. You have a boundary, you have a self-esteem, you have a self-worth, and there are certain things that you are not willing to accept, kind of like deal breakers within a relationship. And this can be with family members too, and work colleagues. Seek uh, validation. If you're unsure whether you're being manipulated, talk to a trusted friend, someone who can take an objective viewpoint, because manipulation causes confusion. 
It gets you to doubt your perception. It gets you to doubt your own instinct. It gets you to doubt your feelings and your perception of reality. So talk to someone who you can trust, who can take an objective viewpoint, be they friend, family member, or a therapist who can help provide an outside perspective because it can help you see the situation with more clarity. Sometimes if you need to, you may need to document interactions uh, that you're having with the manipulator, especially if it involves gaslighting or other tactics that make you doubt your own perception of reality, your own memories and things like that. This can help you maintain clarity and provide evidence if needed. I mean, with the gaslighting one, again, I know it's like it's a bit of a thing of mine. People can actually deny written word and just kind of, and then they stonewall you on it. You know, you can get these manipulative tactics. They often come... It's not just one, it's normally one, two, three, four, or five. There might be a whole bunch of them going on to really, really grind you down. The one really important thing as well when managing this kind of stuff is to stay calm. Manipulators uh, usually aim to provoke an emotional reaction. Remember the stonewalling, get you to get angry, get you to get emotional. Stay calm and composed to avoid giving them the satisfaction or any leverage that they're seeking um, over the situation and you can do this by practicing mindfulness or deep breathing going for a walk things like that you know if someone's stonewalling you let them let just let them damn well stonewall you know walk away seriously walk away it's really hard to do um, but if someone's stonewalling you just just let them get on with it if someone's gaslighting can let them get on with it walk away from the situation do not react it's really hard really 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 hard to do but walk away from it do what you need to do because, and these things that you need to do like walking or breathing or go and have a cold shower or something, it'll help you stay centered. Assertive communication, use, use this uh, uh, assertive communication techniques to express your needs and boundaries without being aggressive. You know, practice, practice using I statements and remain focused on your own feelings and your needs. Uh, for example, I feel disrespected when you ignore me and I need us to communicate openly. Now. They might say, well, that's your problem. I can't help it that you misinterpreted it. I mean, you'll probably get that one. You've understood me wrong. You know, you're gonna get more manipulation coming forward. But if you're absolutely sure, um, you know, it's like, what you do is you stop doing the you because the you creates blame. If, if I turn around to go in, you, you know, you're ignoring me. Uh, that's making me feel like shit. You know, instantly the other person's back is up. But if you say, you know, I feel quite disrespected by some of your behaviours, you know, you're ignoring me, and that's just, it just feels awful. Um, and I, I really don't think it's healthy for us to kind of uh, do this between ourselves. You know, you can even do it that way. Be quite diplomatic and, and check the response. And if the response comes back positive, you know, like, yeah, I've been thinking about it too, and it's, you're right, and I don't know why I do it. I go into this, now communication's opened up, you know, they start using I statements. Yeah, kind of, I, I get into this space and I don't know what to do and so I do this and I know it's wrong and but I don't know how, I, now you can help each other but if the other person just turns around and goes, you know, well that's your problem, I'm not in charge of your feelings and the way you feel, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying, it's not my intention this, da 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 that, da 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 that, you're so sensitive, you're so negative, I mean these are all clues that you're still being manipulated because they're not looking at their behaviour, they're not looking at the dynamics even. You know, if they can't look at themselves, they're not even willing to look at the dynamics and the distress it may be causing you or the distress and dysfunction it's causing within the relationship. Uh, another way to help prevent a lot of this stuff going on for you is to educate yourself. Knowledge is power. Educate yourself about common manipulation tactics, how they work. The more you understand them, the better equipped you will be to recognise and counteract them you'll see them and then also limit contact whenever possible limit your contact with uh, toxic individuals and if you must interact with them keep the conversations brief and focused on necessary topics protect your energy by minimizing exposure so many people get drawn back in you know treat them like a stranger or it's like a business complaint kind of go yes well this happened then that happened then that happened and this is where we're at so many people will jump into the story, especially during divorce and separation and things like that, uh, where manipulation tactics are often used. But it's not just for that, but that's for like financial gain and, you know, lawyers get involved and it gets messy. So it's kind of like, you know, treat it like you would a solicitor or, or a lawyer. You know, it's objective facts, as objective as facts can get. It's objective facts, this, this, this and this. Don't put the emotion into the statements. Don't put the blame. Don't put the use statements. Use the... Or if you're going to use anything. 
Uh, and then obviously therapeutic sport is another way to uh, help you with manipulation tactics. I mean, the best support you can have is to walk away, um, but a therapist can help you do that, friends can help you do that, and help you repair the damage that's done by it to, for instance, your self-esteem, your self-worth, your own mistrust of yourself and your own perception. Definitely therapy can help with those things as well. And it will help strengthen your emotional resilience and bring back your trust in yourself and your ability to perceive reality for what it is as best as is humanly possible. So I hope that helps. Um, there's just a few there, but they do get deep. They do get complex. There are a lot of variables and there are every, every relationship is different. Every manipulation, ways of manipulating are, you know, they're a variation on the core concept. So it's a variation on the core concept of gaslighting. And there's a variation of the core concept of, you know, guilt tripping and things like that and all the other stuff I mentioned. So kind of it will be in, it will have its own idiosyncrasies within the relationship. Um, but I hope that helps. And until next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.